No problems. $100,000 worth of generators for $5,000 is pretty good deal, doesn't it? No brainer. And with that, Mr. Mayor, I move that we adopt resolution 2020 21 as written. Second. Resolution 2020-22. I didn't have a copy of that. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay, let's do it later then if you want. This was a last minute request that we got through the New River Regional Planning District Commission that a couple of the other communities have already passed this resolution regarding wellness and since you all didn't have another meeting for several weeks I did ask uh, the clerk to try to get it prepared for tonight but we'll, we'll bring it back to you when we come back at the end of the meeting. <coughs> okay. And now Mr. Chum, would you like to give your report please? Oh yes, are you all ready? <laughs> <laughs> I have a a number of things and some of them are I'll start with kind of the announcements and something that Jordan and I went back and forth on but we're very pleased to say that our ballpark county park won the best of the ball fields for rookies for 2020 so that's something that we should all be very very proud of um, and it will bring some nice publicity uh, to us and to the town um, Last time uh, at your meeting, you did have a presentation from the Peak Creek Conservancy, Conservancy, and we have talked with them. We will be establishing a quarterly meeting schedule. Um, and one of the first things that we'll do in that uh, first meeting is to talk about creating a timeline so that we can look at the many projects that were outlined for you all at that last meeting and make sure that we stay on top of them, particularly as it relates to uh, either your capital budget where we may have to make some contributions or where there are grant activities. Uh, we would like to have, if one of you all as a member of council is interested, we'd like for one of you all to participate uh, in those quarterly meetings. Uh, and so as you have an interest, if you would just let me know, we'll make sure that you get fired in and we can have at least two of you if there's more than one of you who's interested in uh, participating in that process. Um, something else that we have um, done recently after looking at what was happening in the school in the school system as well as vacant schools that we have and our brownfield money I did approach the county and told them that we'd be happy to use some of our brownfield money to do an assessment of the Claremont school which um, is uh, under consideration for housing development um, and so we have gone ahead and given the go-ahead for our consultants to do that study uh, there's a deadline for their housing application of October the 1st and we'll be able to complete that uh, on their behalf uh, we also and you may have read some of this uh, we've received notification of three grants for the James Hardy sewer project still not enough money to do the whole project so we won't commence it until all funds are in hand but we did get five hundred thousand dollars from the Appalachian Regional Commission uh, $700,000 from the Department of Housing and Community Development and uh, one and a quarter million dollars from the EDA. Uh, we anticipate that there's still uh, just under $200,000 that's needed and I have staff working uh, with individuals right now to see if we can't get a grant loan package from the Department of Environmental Quality uh, that would make up that difference but again the only money that we'll spend at this point will be for preliminary engineering to get ready for the use of the other monies um, and won't go into the construction phase until the town's local match is available. Again, something that I think we may not have been as uh, clear on in the past, but we're going to make sure with Rebecca's help that we have money in hand before we start those construction projects. 
I also um, wanted to report to you that uh, you will understand this site better than I do. It's called the GCC site, but it's uh, General Chemical Corporation site. I know it's been discussed with you all previously because we have funds for remediation. Uh, there is a long-term plan idea for that uh, area to become a park. Uh, but unfortunately, we don't have the money right now for it to be developed uh, for that type of use, but we do have funds through our several Brownfields grants to do the actual reme remediation, uh, put a pad or clear the site. Uh, so that'll be done, and we'll put that out for bid in the next several months. Uh, but that is progressing. That was the first, re the first relocation of the yes. state park. Right. Okay. I just make sure I was on the right. Side. And what I've just learned in the last couple of days is that building that's actually on the site is in the town's ownership as well. So I want to check to see if we've done any brownfields assessment on that, because that might be a nice building for redevelopment. Um, but again, I'm kind of peeling back the onion <laughs> one layer at a time as we look at these various projects. Um, I don't believe we have any grounds put on that, because it hasn't been in the county possession very long. Okay, well then we'll certainly see that that gets done, because it's an ideal site and it's got the town's parking lot right on the other side of it, so parking is not an issue, which it sometimes is when you're doing redevelopment. So I'll take a look at that. Um, one thing that uh, has bothered me just because I'm commuting and coming in every day on 99 uh, is seeing a building that, in my eyes, has graffiti on it. And I've never worked in a community that didn't have a graffiti ordinance. Um, so I've had one prepared. Um, it's still in draft form, uh, but I would like for you all to have a copy of it this evening uh, with the goal of having it put on your agenda for the 18th of August. I will tell you that I spoke with the gentleman whose building um, has a graffiti on it. Uh, he was very gracious and thanked me for giving him a heads up. Not sure what he will end up doing as it relates to the graffiti on his building, but he's certainly aware of the fact that I am recommending to the council that we come forward with the graffiti ordinance. Um, so I just ask you all to take that uh, with you, and if you have any comments, uh, Spencer's going to be double-checking uh, the code sites, but we have looked at uh, the graffiti sections in a number of localities and have come up with what we think is the appropriate language. I don't know that we've ever gotten to fully appreciate our new Pulaski sign. Oh, because of its location. Yeah, yeah I understand what you're saying. And uh, last but not least in my comments, uh, because both Rebecca and I and the department heads have spent a lot of time on this, um, and I do plan to bring it forward uh, on the 18th for adoption, is a revised budget for the current fiscal year. It has revisions in both the revenues uh, and the expenditures. Uh, council is aware of the fact that your budget did not have a provision for the building inspection function to continue. Um, and so when the decision was made uh, to reinstate those positions that had originally been slated, uh, to be uh, eliminated with any kind of an agreement with the county. We obviously had to go back and make an adjustment. I've also, I believe, made the council aware of the fact that I've hired a temporary uh, building official who's doing a nice job for us, comes with a lot of certifications. Uh, Rebecca and I found a number of things that had not been um, budgeted uh, sufficiently. Uh, we made some significant reductions in a lot of places. You'll see that in the column on the far right. You'll see where uh, there were funds added or deducted from individual departments, likewise on the revenue side. Uh, the council uh, did in its budget process set aside $438,000 that was to be kept in reserve and there were specific items that were mentioned uh, on the basis of our meeting last time. I did uh, take the funds out of that um, category to fund the um, planner position that's going to be directed toward the economic development kinds of activities. Um, also, um, had to, 
obviously um, make some changes in order to balance the budget. So while you had a number of items recommended totaling $438,195,000, and you'll see that um, category, that set aside balance is now down to 281000 But I have in the process eliminated the um, administrative vehicle uh, for $35,000, the um, replacement of a vehicle for the police department, uh, the recodification of the town code. I think I do one more item. Right, and then the community development position that had to be added back, which is the, uh, the plan. So you still have remaining in that account funds uh, to be looked at in the future for a couple of public works, um, pieces of equipment, and still several um, vacant positions that remain vacant at this time. So I've not added back uh, any of those positions with the exception of the plan. I did remove, for the most part, all uh, training monies and travel money. I think uh, the situation, uh, both in our community and in our country, is such that people aren't moving around. Most training right now is being done via Zoom or Google or one of those uh, mechanisms. If there is essential training beyond that that's needed for the police or fire department, they would have to come to the town manager to get permission uh, to fund any of those activities. Uh, there are several activities that are what I would call employee related, um, general employee kinds of activities. I've made reductions in those. Um, the total uh, reductions on both the revenue and the expenditure side is about $144,000. Uh, but I believe it's a budget that we can live with. Um, the departments have been involved uh, and seen uh, the changes. And I would have to say that. Uh, in the short time that I've been here, everyone has been most cooperative uh, and helpful in trying to wrestle this particular uh, bear to the ground. And I think with your permission and approval at the next meeting, we'll be able to move forward uh, feeling like we have adequate funding to do the jobs that we have. It's not going to be any thrills, uh, but we'll get the job done. So. If you have questions about any items, once you've had a chance to look at that, please give me or Rebecca a call. Uh, but it would be our desire to put that on your agenda for the 18th so that we can move forward. Is there any way I, be, that I or anybody else who wants to get this electronically? Sure. <clears throat> you must read better than I do. After three or four pages, I need to Yeah, it's my time email. That'd be great. Thank you. The, the last thing that I want to mention, and it is somewhat um, budget related, uh, you have a personnel policy manual that's severely outdated, but there are two items that um, are costing money uh, that um, I believe need to be modified. Uh, one is um, how overtime is calculated. Under your current policy, and these policies are adopted by the council, um, we don't count sick leave toward time worked in order to be eligible for overtime, but we do count annual leave. In every community that I have worked in, neither is counted uh, toward qualifying for overtime. That doesn't mean the person doesn't get paid, they just get paid straight time for those hours until they reach uh, 40 actual worked hours versus being covered by some type of leave. Um, and so it would be my recommendation that that policy uh, be changed in the future. Uh, the other one is the issue of comp time. And that's a difficult one because you all as a council, not necessarily individuals sitting here, but as a council, you have evidently gone back and forth at different times as to what that maximum level would be. The problem with comp time is that you earn it in one time period, and if people are allowed to carry over excessive hours, when they finally leave, you're paying at a different rate when, than what they were earning at the time that they actually earned the comp time. Your 
policy on comp time also is that comp time is uh, accrued at time and a half uh, as opposed to um, just straight comp time. And it's done that way uh, so that you can avoid paying the cash out as overtime. Um, I believe that your limit for carryover, which is currently 200 hours, is too high. Um, and that it needs to be uh, ratcheted downward uh, for your, what I call your 40 hour week employees. I think uh, two weeks work is more than generous. Uh, which would be 80 hours. There may need to be a slightly different calculation for police and fire given the kind of schedules they work. And I'm willing to look at what those adjustments might be. But again, I'd like to move forward with those policies um, as soon as is practical, assuming that the council doesn't have uh, any major objection to them. Um, what I would suggest to departments is that they should follow what the Fair Labor Standards Act requires or indicates, and that is that comp time uh, that's used within the same pay period as it's earned is straight time. So what this means is that your managers have got to manage their people and not just say, yes, you can work you know, an extra two hours this evening and then take it as comp time. But they ought to be able, to, within a pay period, unless it's the end of the pay period, they ought to be able to say, okay, if you work two hours on Tuesday, take off next Monday for two hours in order to accommodate uh, whatever the work week is or the work period. Um, there are gonna be instances where that's not possible. And then obviously the employees will accrue at the time and a half comp time rate. But I think we need to be asking the managers to manage more and not allow the employees to manage us. I guess my question is, uh, to me, it seems like it's an, an, a comp time, or maybe it's a stupid thought, is, is a added step, an unnecessary step to where, could we not just ask that to be paid out at the time that it was spent? And actually, if they worked over, then they should be paid to work over. And if the manager is responsible for a budget, then they would be responsible for trimming that additional pay somewhere else, as opposed to calling it comp time and letting them work 38 hours, having them actually work 38 hours if, if they worked over the previous week and let them have that additional time off. They're still getting paid overtime for the additional hours that they worked on a previous week. And so it's still technically, you know, you know, additional pay for working longer in that particular week than what it would be if someone worked 40 hours and then worked 40 hours. But I, I guess I don't necessarily understand the purposes of, of having somebody work 42 hours one week and saying, let's call it comp time instead of just calling it overtime. Well, the, the difference is the pay and the payout. And we don't really budget very much for overtime pay. Mm -hmm. um, and because of that, I think the uh, departments have been encouraged to um, and with the fact that they've been able to carry as many as 200 hours, they've allowed employees to earn comp time and not have to take it off. What your policy says is that the department head can manage the comp time and can actually say to an employee, you need to take some of this time off. You know, you're getting too large and accrual. That's not seemingly been happening. And so what I'm trying to do is make recommendations that encourage, if not enforce, um, the fact that people manage within those budgets. I think to make, to suddenly say just pay them overtime is gonna make it, I don't wanna say this nicely, it's gonna make it easy for someone to say, okay, go ahead and I'll pay you, but then who's gonna find the money to pay? Uh, because there are certain fixed expenses in a budget unless you have, let's say turnover, you know, people leaving and so you may save um, some salary money for a while, it's going to be very difficult to pay overtime on a regular basis. Um, and there are a lot of uh, positions that are accruing significant amounts of comp time at the time and a half basis, whereas if they manage within the pay period, it's just going to be straight time. And the person will still, in the case of a 40-hour week, um, in the two-week pay period, they'll still just work 80 hours 
but some of them maybe time off because they had they earned four hours the previous week and then they would take four hours off the next week. But it was never a really clean anything. So well, with putting more responsibility on the managers mm -hmm. to manage the time, um, and and then by reducing that carryover, and of course. Anybody that's got those numbers now, if somebody's capped at 200, we're not going to take the 200 hours away from them. But what I am going to say to department heads is that you need to start managing those employees in a way that that number starts coming down. You know, maybe it's two hours here and three hours there. It's you know, but they need to manage it. It shouldn't be that the employees are telling us when they want to take off. It should be at the convenience of the organization. I would certainly agree with that effort. I know when we had the discussion some time ago, it ended up revolving a lot, and understandably so, around our first responders with police and fire because of the way they work. So just understanding, having a full understanding of what we need to do there to ensure that you know they too get a fair shake, um, I certainly would support the reduction um, where, where it's needed. Well, I haven't zeroed in on the police and fire carry forward yet. I am thinking two weeks is more than uh, sufficient for what I call the 40-hour week people to carry, that they could be paid for at the end if they um, were not able to take it off. But I want to look at both the police and fire schedules because they're different in different communities and they do have a straight time component to each one of them before they actually get into overtime. And so I want to work on that but didn't want to spend a lot of time on it if the council was not uh, supportive of moving in that direction. And I had thought that we had discussed a lot of times that it had to be down by the end of the year. But could we, and, and she was saying it's 200 hours, is what, I thought we'd kick that can down the road before that it's up to the department head. If they had one year or that year, year to year to get that down, or it's just, well, it's, uh, I know, I know. At the time we had that discussion, if you remember, the comp time it made look like it was was uh, you know out of this world. It was extremely high, and we worked for what eighteen months, as I recall, because I, I don't even. I mean, people had unlimited comp time at this point, and it was uh, it was quite a uh, a financial. Uh, and it's a liability, liability in your audit. Exactly. Huh. And, uh, so that's the reason we pushed for that reduction. Apparently, 200, and I don't recall 200 hour was where we, where we landed. And if we need to uh, fine tune that, um, I'm certainly 100% agree with that from my perspective. And so, I, the question I've gotten asked before is uh, in regards to a salary position. When people find that's you're paid for a you know a salary is a is a base pay for a job, and so they ask how does a salary position get comp time? You know for working over to, to fulfill a job. The difference uh, is whether or not the position is considered exempt or non-exempt. Mm -hmm. If you're considered an exempt employee, which is generally management, um, there is no such thing as comp time. Uh, but what normally happens, and this has been my practice as well, um, if I have a department head who I know uh, worked <laughs> Two hours over earlier this week and then came in today because I needed them for something and then they need to go to the dentist or the doctor next week I don't ask them to put in a leave for for that hour and a half because they've given me more than the 40 hours but it's not a strict accounting on the other hand I've had people work for me who are exempt and who are paid well who are clock watchers you know and they're in right at 8 30 and they're out at 5 and when that person wants to take off to go see the dentist I tell them to put in a leave form because, you know, I'm only getting the 40 hours. Uh, but people who are exempt, um, and the federal government has just recently raised the threshold, dollar threshold, for what constitutes exempt, both on a salary basis and then the kind of work that they perform. If you have what's called a working supervisor, somebody who's doing the work and at the same time supervising, they're generally considered non-exempt. And those are the people that would be eligible for overtime and comp time. 
So just because you get a salary doesn't necessarily mean you're eligible or ineligible for comp time. It really is the, the amount of the salary and the kind of duties that you have. So we have some salary positions that are underneath that threshold. Yes, sir. I know I'm throwing a lot at you, but I'm trying very hard to put some um, things in place that I think will help you have better managed departments and better use of the funds that you do have. And they're not always popular, and I know that, but that's why I'm working here. And this is just kind of a random but curious question more than anything. Is, as far as revenues go, um, do, you, do you have a feel you know, there was a big concern when we originally had this budget. Um, we, we didn't know what, what the COVID-19 and how it was going to impact our revenues. Do you have a feel for how we're tracking this? Well, the way Rebecca went through her review of our current revenues was to go back and kind of look at trends. I think we actually went back how many years, Bob? We did 34 and five years. Yeah. Right. So we tried to look at those. Um, as well as what had been budgeted. And then as you can see, uh, we reduced the revenues by $144,000. What's still kind of outstanding is trying to sort out the grant issue that has been a real challenge for your budget generally. Um, and as soon as that's sorted out, we'll know what a carry forward would be. And I hope to have that resolution for you uh, on the 18th. As well but I know when we looked at um, meals tax it was doing really it's, well it's doing well I mean it's maybe not a hundred percent but of course you know you have one or two restaurants that were closed and right. they I think they're open again sometimes they look like they're still closed but but their revenues just start your lodging tax is down right now um, as compared to this particular time period, you know, a year ago. Um, but we've tried to go ahead and make some adjustments on revenue with what we know now. Um, and we may have to do some more of that later. But So you reduced another, just to make sure I understood, you reduced the, the revenue from this budget by another 144000 Yes, sir. Thousand in yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then reduce that same amount on the expenditure. That's all I have. <laughs> <clears throat> all right. <clears throat> May I have a motion to enter into closed session for the following items? Two items under Virginia Code 2.2-3711 A1, discussion consideration for interviews of prospective candidates for employment, assignment, appointment, promotion, performance, demotion, salaries, disciplining, or resignation of specific public officers, appointees, or employees of any public body, and evaluation of performance of departments or schools of public institutions of higher education where such evaluation will necessarily involve discussion of the performance of specific individuals concerning appointments concerning appointments concerning performance of the interim town manager appointments to boards and commissions and then two items under virginia code 2.2-3711 little a3 for consideration of the acquisition of real property for public purpose or the disposition of public Publicly, publicly held real property where discussion is an open meeting would adversely affect the bargaining position or a negative negotiation strategy of the public body. <clears throat> and two items under Virginia Code 2.2-3711 little a 8 <clears throat> consultation with legal uh, counsel employees 
or are retained by the public body regarding specific legal matters requiring the provision of legal advice by such counsel regarding a zoning violation or a boundary adjustment and one item dealing with the current COVID-19 pandemic. So moved. Second. Can I have a roll call, please? Yes, sir. Mr. Ken? Yes. Carlson? Aye. Green? Aye. Mr. Beckley? Aye. Mr. Ross? Aye. Mr. Reed? Aye. Is y'all ready for that? I think we have a minute. Oh, we can see quiet. Yeah, open and close the day.